Yo guys, what's up? In this video, I want to address the mystery that has interested historians for decades. Was Field Marshal Erwin Rommel involved in the legendary bomb plot against Hitler on the 20th of July 1944? Rommel had completely fallen out with his Führer by July of 1944 and had many reasons to join the men who conspired against Hitler. Every single battle that had been lost in North Africa, Italy and North France was a direct result of Hitler's stubbornness. He hadn't given Rommel the sufficient manpower in North Africa. He had opted for Kesselring's defense plan in Italy instead of Rommel's plan and he had opted for von Rundstedt's decision to keep the tanks away from the Normandy beaches in June of 1944 resulting in a lost Normandy sector, of course. And finally, Rommel's request to personally defend the vital port of Cherbourg was also denied. Rommel started to spread his opinion. The Führer has totally lost it. There is no chance anymore that Germany will win the war. Because of all of this, many believe that Rommel had a hand in the bomb plot carried out by devoted Christian Klaus von Stauffenberg, but the truth is that Rommel had only been informed that there was a plan to eliminate the Führer. One of the men involved in the conspiracy had traveled to Rommel's headquarters and had informed Rommel's chief of staff, who informed his own boss later. Rommel was a man of honor and would defend Germany until the end, but the only solution was the one with Hitler out of the picture. Everybody knew that only Joseph Goebbels remained as a possible candidate to take Hitler's place, and he knew nothing about war. Hermann Göring had lost his position after mid-1942, and Martin Bormann also had no clue about how to command a war. An unconditional surrender would be the only way to save Germany and its citizens. After the failed bomb plot of the 20th of July, the Gestapo arrested and trialed hundreds of suspects. Also the former World War I assault troop fighter, war god Erwin Rommel became a suspect, but was never trialed. But Rommel also had created a lot of enemies, such as General Heinrich Kirschheim, who had been called a coward by Rommel in North Africa. Rommel himself enjoyed good PR fame by both the German soldiers and the Allies, but his own staff officers saw him as an amateur who was reckless and incapable of leadership. In September 1944, an elite group of Germans had been shown evidence of the fact that both Rommel and his chief of staff, Hans Speidel, had been aware of the idea to kill the Führer. Via a testimony of Heinrich Eberbach, a man who had spoken with Rommel on the 17th of July 1944. Also on the 15th of July, Rommel had written a dramatic letter for Hitler, stating that the end was near and that it was necessary to draw the right conclusions from this situation. Eberbach was captured by the British a few weeks later and confessed by telling some of his fellow prisoners but the British were listening in. There is no proof that this statement from Eberbach was true, but it was enough to use against Rommel, who had been a major target for the British. Rommel himself had been attacked by RAF planes on the 17th of July after his conversation with General Eberbach, as he was being driven back to his headquarters. He was in the hospital when the bomb plot was carried out in the Wolf's lair and wrote to his wife on the 24th of July that he was shocked about hearing the news. He wrote, thank God that it ended so well, clearly showing that Rommel opted for defeat against USA and Britain, rather than turning Hitler into a martyr by eliminating him. But it was just a sort of insurance, a nice little PR stunt to keep his wife and son from harm. Tortured suspects and Gestapo investigations also showed that Rommel was aware of the bomb plot. So in September 1944, the Ehrenhof had to choose between Rommel and Speidel, but most members of this elite Ehrenhof were enemies of Rommel, especially Heinrich Kirchheim. On October 14, 1944, Burgdorf 
and Meisel came to Rommel's house and presented him the choice between cyanide suicide and a shameful public trial. Less than an hour later, Rommel chose his family before public dishonor and took his own life on a hill just outside of his hometown. His funeral became an act, a theater, that still he was buried with all military respects and his family lived on to spread his story after the war. See you on the next one guys. Peace.